G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the power rankings that I do every five rounds, basically plotting how I rank the teams on form and to what extent they're going to make the finals or even win the flag overall. You've probably noticed that I do this video every five rounds. Well, we've just ticked over round 20 and with three rounds to go before the finals, I thought it'd be a good idea to plot and rank which teams I think are serious and which teams I think are not in 2021. Now, these videos are always really hard to do because you sort of got to look a little bit past the ladder and really look at form and also head to head against other really good teams. But this particular power rankings video is probably the most difficult video I've had to do on this topic. Trying to split anywhere from from 7th to 12th was an absolute disaster. I think this could be the single worst top eight finals race I've ever seen. Now I'm not talking about the top six, I think there's a clear gap to the top six, but anywhere between seventh to maybe even 13th this year, none of those teams are really crying out for a spot in the eight. We're gonna get into all of that as well. Even the bottom four I found really, really hard to organize. And then of course at the top of the table, it's also very hard to split who the best team is. It's gonna be a strange year where you can probably scrape into finals with 11 or dare I say even 10 wins this year. Whereas in previous years, sometimes that will get you 13th or 14th. But anyway, guys, we are gonna get into all of that. The format for the video will be, I will rank my 18 teams in order, starting from the bottom or the worst team in the comp, all the way to who I believe is the top team or the team to beat. Before we get into the video, make sure you do go check out the sponsors of today's video, Manscaped, for 20% off and free shipping on all your male grooming goodies. They've just launched the Lawnmower 4.0, the Performance Package 4.0, which comes with a heap of different products and accessories and ball deodorants and all that stuff. Might sound silly if you've never used it, but they do have some really, really good products in what is a growing market. So go check out manscaped.com, use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, and you'll get your 20% off and free shipping. Let's get into the power rankings. In 18th spot and the worst form side in the comp, I'm gonna go with the Gold Coast Suns who are currently 15th on the ladder. Now, I always look at the last five games of these teams because I obviously do these video five rounds apart. In their last five, they've won two with good wins over GWS and Richmond, and they've also had three losses against Melbourne, Brisbane, and the Western Bulldogs. Now, that is a fairly tough run of fixtures. All of those sides would have been considered, you know, a good chance to make the top eight. And I'd imagine four out of that five mentioned will be finalists this year, but it's really evident that Gold Coast is running out of steam as a young side often does and how they so often do late in seasons. Their 98 point loss to the Demons on the weekend shows they're probably the worst side in at the moment. In 17th as the second worst form side of the competition, I'm going with the Adelaide Crows who currently sit 16th on the ladder. Now they've won one of their last five since the last video beating Hawthorne at Marvel Stadium, which in isolation is actually a really good win considering it was meant to be a home game, but they've sustained heavy losses against Brisbane, Essendon, West Coast and the Western Bulldogs. Now again, that is a tough run of fixtures. Some of those teams are quite good, but against Essendon, they had their lowest score ever of two goals, nine if I'm not mistaken. And then of course got beaten pretty easily by a very struggling West Coast. Very struggling? Really struggling. Now I'm not ragging on Adelaide like the Gold Coast Suns, they're a young side that's kind of running out of steam. I've liked what they've done this year, but they're probably the second worst side in it on current form. Ranked 16th is Hawthorne, who are currently 17th on the ladder, who have won one of their last five, but in that time also picked up a draw against the Melbourne Footy Club. Now, their best performance in this run was their win over the Brisbane Lions by 12 points in a game where the, the score probably flattered Brisbane by the end of it, looking at the inside 50 count. But their losses to the Crows, Dockers and Port show they're still a fair way off the pace. Their form against the good teams in the competition has been a real positive. Like I said, they beat Brisbane and they drew with Melbourne. And for those results, I'm elevating them above Adelaide, despite the fact that Adelaide just beat them. Ranked 15 is Collingwood, who are currently 14th on the ladder. They've won two of their last five, although of course on the weekend they put in just about their best performance of the season, absolutely battering the Eagles, and they've also beaten Richmond in the last five too. The losses they sustained in this period were against St Kilda, Carlton, and Port Adelaide. Now they could be on the brink of rising up the rankings based on you know how they performed against the Eagles, but so far that performance has been a real outlier, so I couldn't quite justify having them higher. There's a good chance they're trending upward. In 14th spot, believe it or not, I've got the Wooden Spoon favourites, North Melbourne, who are currently 18, and they have won two of their last five games. Their two wins were particularly good. They had a really good 39-point win over Carlton, in which, you know, a lot of things clicked for them. Nick Larkey kicked seven goals, uh, and then, of course, they beat the Eagles in Perth on a wet Monday night. In that time, they've had honourable losses against three good teams, Geelong, the Bulldogs, and Essendon. Overall, for me, it's the consistency of performance. It's been a while since they've turned in a real stinker, and things are starting to click. The young players are going well. I think 
To be honest, I think they're more capable than Collingwood slightly at this very, very point in time. I could be wrong on that, but I just favour North at the moment. I think they're probably even a better challenge for good sides than the teams below them at the moment. Ranked 13th, I've got the reigning premiers who are currently 11th on the ladder who have won just one of their last five games over a struggling Brisbane side. In that time, they've had a big loss to Geelong and they had some closer losses against Fremantle, Collingwood and Gold Coast. For me, their form line is a massive concern and their win over the Lions is definitely an outlier in that patch, although we've seen Brisbane haven't been great themselves either. To me, they've been really poor in some of their losses and as far as I'm concerned, are not a realistic finals chance anymore. In 12th spot, we've got Carlton, who are 12th on the ladder. And this was the first team that really started to give me some difficulty as they've won three of their last five with wins against St. Kilda, Fremantle and Collingwood and losses to North Melbourne and Geelong. They've done a pretty good job pretty much all year of beating the sides around them on the ladder, but they're not quite elevating themselves above that. They did have a quite poor loss to North Melbourne by 39 points, and it's hard to tell because North are also red hot at the moment. The reason I'm having a bit of difficulty with the Blues is that in the last five, they've beaten teams like Fremantle and St. Kilda, and those are teams I've ranked higher than them. But my justification is they started a fair way back, in my opinion. I had those teams above Carlton before that, and just the way things are going, I couldn't quite elevate Carlton just yet. The 11th best side in the competition, in my opinion, is Fremantle, who find themselves in 8th spot currently. Their last five hasn't been overly crash hot with just two wins from their last five games. They had a compelling win against North Melbourne in Tasmania. And of course, they beat Richmond in a thrilling yet scrappy contest on the weekend. But their losses in this period have also been poor against Carlton, Geelong and Sydney. Now, they'll have a bit of momentum going into the rest of the season after their win against Richmond, but for me, might sound salty, I just don't think it was the most compelling performance. Their final three games of the season will be against Brisbane, West Coast, and St. Kilda, so we will come to learn a bit more about where exactly they're at and how much they've improved after those three games. As the 10th ranked side of the competition, I've got St. Kilda, who currently sit down in 13th spot, another side who's won just two of their last five. They've been a real hot and cold side. They've had three losses in a row, I think after three wins as well, and their losses have been to West Coast, Carlton, and Port Adelaide, and their wins were against Brisbane and Collingwood. For me, they're just too hot and cold. We know that the side is capable on paper, but some of their losses have been average. For me, it's probably a case of had they beat West Coast, I'd elevate them above West Coast, but because they didn't, I'm keeping them in 10th right now. As the ninth best side, I've got the West Coast Eagles who currently sit in seventh spot. And this is a tough one. And I'm, I'm expecting some criticism on this because of how horrible the Eagles have been in their three losses of the last five. They had two wins against the Crows and the Saints and then some horrid performances against Sydney, North and Collingwood. The simple answer for why I don't have the Eagles lower and I expected to come into this video and absolutely slaughter them. But when I did it, you look at the teams around this range and none of them are playing so much better than West Coast. Yes, I would argue that the Eagles' worst performances are the worst as well, but then they've elevated and beaten St. Kilda, who the team that I ranked slightly below them, so I couldn't justify them below St. Kilda. What I will say though is that unlike some of the other teams, the Eagles are definitely trending in the wrong direction and I could understand the criticism that ninth is probably too generous, but I just don't think the other teams around them have elevated themselves to that level either. As the eighth best side of the competition, in my opinion, I've got Essendon, who currently sit 10th on the ladder. Their wins in the last five include good wins over North Melbourne and Adelaide, and then some losses against Geelong, the Giants, and Sydney. So reading from that, they're beating the sides they should beat and then losing to other finals contenders. For me, I think they're clearly above West Coast and the rest of that group as well, mostly because of their competitiveness against the top teams. It was a disappointing loss against the Giants and one that could potentially cost them finals. But in my opinion, they're clearly the eighth best side in the competition based on what we're seeing so far. I'll go as far as to say that Essendon is the first team I've mentioned so far that is probably finals quality. In 7th spot, we've got the GWS Giants who currently sit ninth on the AFL ladder. They've had some good away wins in the last five against the Dees and the Dons, and they've also had some losses away from their state against Port Adelaide, Sydney, and Gold Coast. Now, another one of these sides that just should really have no right of being close to the finals race, but in my opinion, they're probably the seventh best and probably the best of that pack chasing seventh and eighth, and I probably just elevate them above Essendon because they just beat them there in Victoria. They're so hot and cold, and I think most years, this side doesn't play finals, but they, along with Essendon, are teams that I probably trust more than any other in terms of you know playing finals and being competitive in them. 
In sixth spot, I'm going to go with the Brisbane Lions. And for me, this is where the gap is established between sixth and seventh. Brisbane is so much better than the other teams that I've mentioned so far. But I have got them sliding out after a poor five weeks. They've won just two of their last five. They've only beat the struggling Suns and the Crows and the sustained losses to Hawthorne, Richmond and St. Kilda. At the moment, they're in a bit of a world of pain and I haven't really seen Brisbane slump like this since they came good under Fagan in 2019. I think their best is still good enough to contend even for a flag, but if they keep dropping games like this, the top four race is going to close on them. For me, based on their current form slump, I still think they're good enough on their day, but they slide clearly out of the top five teams for me. In fifth spot, I am going with Port Adelaide and I agonized over this one because splitting them in Sydney is really tough. They've won four of their last five and only succumbed to a Melbourne side that I thought brought their A game in Adelaide. In that time, they've also had healthy wins over Hawthorne, St. Kilda, Collingwood and the Giants on the weekend in Melbourne. Again, found it so tough to split them and Sydney considering they beat Sydney something like six weeks ago, but I think the form against the top teams is ultimately my deciding factor and I think Sydney is more of a giant killer and has more potential of going really deep into finals than Port Adelaide at this current point in time. Still, they're part of that outside group of contenders and they're still, along with Brisbane, clearly better than the rest of those teams below them on the ladder. It will be an interesting race for top four as I think it may even come down to percentage between them and Sydney. In fourth spot, a team that I have spoken about plenty just now is the Sydney Swans who are currently fifth on the ladder and they've won all of their last five games with wins over the Dons, Frio, Giants, Dogs, and West Coast. Now, I think the real talk about Sydney really ascending themselves on the ladder came after they battered the Eagles by 92 points down in Geelong. And then the following week, they toppled the Dogs, who were on top of the ladder, at their home deck at Marvel Stadium. Like I said, my justification of having them edge Port Adelaide is probably their form against the top teams and that away win against the Dogs at Marvel Stadium. They will have a lot of belief that Port Adelaide probably don't have themselves just yet. In third spot, I've got the Melbourne Footy Club sliding down after winning just two of their last five with a draw against Hawthorne in that period as well. Their two wins were big wins over the Suns and Port Adelaide and their losses came to the Dogs and the Giants at the MCG. It's been a stuttering sort of last five game for the Ds. I still think their best has been fantastic, but also in that period, their worst has been quite poor. On their day, I still think they are the best team in the comp, but their lack of consistency of hitting that level is what slides them out of the top two for me. Now, the top two is really agonizing and I keep changing my mind. And I know this is probably going to upset a fair few fans out there, but ultimately it doesn't really matter who I rank first and second, but I have gone with the Bulldogs in second spot. They won four of their last five games. They beat Melbourne, Gold Coast, Adelaide and North in that period with their one loss coming against Sydney in Melbourne. Again, it's incredibly hard to split them and the Cats, but I probably just deduct a few points for their home loss against the Swans. Only percentage splits them on the actual ladder, but you could argue either way who is the top team right now. So that leads me on to Geelong, who have won all of the last five games. They've been far too good for Essendon, Carlton, Fremantle, Richmond, and North Melbourne in that time frame. I guess my other justification for Geelong being in top spot is their raw firepower. And I think a lot of people, including myself, said going into this season, this team is the best list in the competition. Obviously, it doesn't always work out that way, but when you factor in their final experience and the fact that they're really firing with guys like Smith, Higgins, and Cameron coming into that side, it's very, very hard to bet against Geelong for the flag. So for me, they probably edge the dogs, but it's it's either way, to be honest. I wouldn't really argue too strongly if someone disagreed with me on that. Well, that's it, guys. That is all I have for my 18 teams ranked in order of how seriously I rate them and what threat they are to you know the finals race or the flag race or how likely they are to win the wooden spoon. It's all kind of up in the air at the moment. It's made for a very, very interesting season. Let me know, as always, in the comments what you thought of my rankings. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? I'm anticipating probably criticisms of ranking Carlton a little bit low. I often cop that one, but that's just been my opinion. I do think they could be on the brink of rising. And again, maybe some criticism of having the Eagles Knights because I understand why people think they don't look like the ninth best side in the comp. But we will learn so much from the final three weeks of the season, guys. Hope to have you along with us for that journey over the next few weeks. It's going to be a really exciting end to the season. Stay tuned for all the content coming out. Subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.